This is the plaintiff, Blanca Bonetta. She says she hired the defendant to build her a deck on the back of her house, gave him a deposit, but then ran into trouble with her bank and she couldn't come up with the rest of the money for the job. She called the defendant immediately. He told her he'd ordered the materials, and now that she can't get her $3,520 returned, she's suing. This is the defendant, Philip Bruno. He says the lumber yard told him there'd be a restocking fee for the supplies he'd already ordered. And when he told this to the plaintiff, the woman went haywire. Meanwhile, he's lost a week's worth of work wasting his time with the plaintiff. And if she wants to play hardball, bat her up. He's accused of decking a woman. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $5,000 for lost work, lost profits, and restocking fees. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. Plaintiff hired the defendant to build a deck, but there was a problem, and he won't give her the deposit back. Now, the defendant says there were already fees incurred. It's the case of, what a deck. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Blanca Boneda. Yes. You are suing Philip Bruno and Bruno Construction for $3,520, a deposit that you paid him that you want refunded to you. You have a counterclaim against her for $5,000 for loss of profit, plus restocking fees, plus your labor in the time that you spent dealing with her because she changed her mind on a contract. Okay, let's talk to you first, Ms. Bonetta. Tell me what happened. I had uh, Mr. Phillips through a, a client's recommendation. A recommendation from a client? Yes. Okay. What do you do? I have my own business. Okay, what kind of business? A nail salon. Okay. Yes. So a client told you about him. Yes. And you wanted to do what? Build a deck? Yes. Okay. So he came over. We, he looked over the job. Uh, a couple of days later, he came in on a Friday with a uh, contract on the price on the deck. And I agreed on the price, and I signed the contract. And on Tuesday, the 22nd, he came to my store and I then gave him the check for the $3,520. So um, that Saturday, the 26th, um, I found that I couldn't get uh, finances to build this deck. What do you mean? You had signed the contract already? Yes, I did. I told him I No, couldn't. but what changed? Like, how, how did you <clears throat> sign a contract to build a $17,000 deck if you don't have the money to build a $17,000 deck or not gonna, and you're not going to get it? How did that happen? I understand. I thought I could get the money off to Where pay. were you going to get the money? I was going to try to get it through my bank. Okay. So, but how about you finance first, then sign contracts later? You're right. So right. I'm sorry. And so you didn't get the money, and then what happened? So I called him up, and I and told him, you know, I cannot get the proper finances for right now. i like to postpone the job until September. Ms. Bonetta, you didn't say to him, let's postpone the job until September. You said, I'll hire you in September again, give me my money back. That's what happened, right? Yes, I want my deposit back. Right, why? Okay. You, had pay, you had hired him. You had entered into a contract with him. I honestly, I didn't okay. read it. Tell me what you had done so far. Okay, uh, t the initial consultation, I met right. with her. I field measured uh, the deck that we were going to uh, build. I took photos. I worked on uh, job costing, labor costing, material list. To put the, the estimate together. Put everything to put the so estimate together. So that means phone together. calls to find out what the, what the product Correct. will cost. Went to the lumber yard, picked up samples of the decking material and the railing material to show her exactly Brought what she Brought it back for, to show her. And when I went back, we reviewed the contract line by line, went through everything. Right after I received the check, I ordered the materials, the rounds, basically. So you placed the orders for all? Right after, right after I picked up the check. Okay. A few days hired later, a sub. Hired a subcontractor. I know that to do because I saw in your yes. evidence one of the things you handed was a letter from the sub, the affidavit yes. from the sub uh, saying that he priced it out with you and he was hired by you to go ahead and do the work and yeah, do I part of the work. And I confirmed his thought. The demolition. With her on that, that Tuesday when I did initially pick up the check, I said we would be starting the following Tuesday. The following Tuesday, which was April 29th. Correct. And then when do you finally hear from her saying, I've changed my mind? Saturday around uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And what does she say? Uh, she sent me a text to call her. I called her up, and she stated that she wanted, at first she wanted to postpone the job until September because she had an issue with the finances. Okay. I said, let me call the lumber yard right away. I called the lumber yard. Uh, they told me uh, we can return it, but there will be a restocking fee. We won't 
uh, exactly know until we contact the vendor on Monday. Because the, the lumber yard Saturday buys afternoon. it from a vendor and the vendor charges? Correct. Okay, so there was going to be a restocking fee charge. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I called her back and I told her, uh, I explained to her that the, I can cancel the job, but there is going to be a restocking fee. And I have to. Of how uh, much? Did they tell you how I much? I didn't know at that point. And when you to, say that to her, she says. Then she says, I just want you to refund the money. Why does he have to return all of your money after you've made him work like that? And after he's placed orders and he's supposed to eat the $400? That the, that the place is charged? How much did they charge for the restocking? It case? was $403. He's supposed to eat that should come out of his pocket because you change your mind because you buy things you don't have money for? I didn't know that there was a restocking fee. That was not stated in the contract. Well, here, here's what you're talking about right now. Here's your position then. I want all my money back. I want you to rip up the contract I signed. I want it like it never happened. Whereupon the guy had said to you, what? I... On Saturday, after I called her back and said there would be a restocking fee, I said, I'll find out exactly what it is. I'll contact you Monday. So you do. And then Sunday morning. So the restocking fee was $403.22. Correct. That you're being charged by the lumberyard. Yes. Like, in other words, you paid them 2000 something. Yes. To, how much did you pay them? Uh, it, w it went on my account. Yeah, but and it was how much? Was it was the total over $2,000 for, for the rounds. For, for, for the lumber. And then they were only going to return... That minus 403.22. That's what he was being charged. Correct. Okay, and I see it. I see it in the lumberyard bill. So you were being charged that, and then all you said to her is, look, you know, if you want, we'll just sign a release, forget it, you get, and you just pay me 250 for all the time I've wasted right now. Correct. Right. That was a really good deal. <laughs> you should have taken what was behind door number one. All the guy wanted was $250 for his trouble, which is very little, and the $400.03 restocking fee. You could have gotten out of your contract for a measly $653. Because now, when you filed a lawsuit against him to get every penny you paid him back, he has filed a counterclaim against you to get his lost profits for your breach of the contract. Do you know what that means? Yes. Kind of, right? <clears throat> it means that there are consequences to signing your name on the dotted line. I assume that you had the job planned out for a certain amount of days. I had, all the me I had my, my men lined up to work. I had, when I canceled everything on that Monday, the demo crew had to leave five men at home on Tuesday because he couldn't reschedule anything so late. I right. was unable to reschedule anything until the following week. I mean, you know, so you cost my two a guys lot stayed money. home. Did you realize that when you sign a contract, it means you have to do it? And that if you don't, you've hurt him financially by a certain amount of profit that he's now going to lose because you didn't abide by your contract? Okay, and I understand what you're saying. However, shouldn't that be stipulated in the contract? The answer is no. Not every contract. Yes, yeah, should it? I love contracts that are very specific. I love when a contract says, if you cancel on this day, it'll cost you X. If you cancel on that day, it'll cost you Y. If you uh, throw me off the job, it'll cost you Z. You know, like, yeah, that'd be great. But not every contract does that. So the question then becomes, the one thing you should know when you sign a contract is it means something. I guess, Your Honor, you're right. Yeah, now we got a problem because now, instead of the reasonable $653 that he was willing to take, now he's asking for what he's entitled to, which are his lost profits on the job. And I assume his lost profits are more than 5,000 because- Yes. Right. Yeah, if it takes. After about, a, it's about an eight, eight or a nine day job. How was all this going on, by text or by talk? She initiated a text for me to call her about canceling the job. And then at that point, I called her back. And then that I had told her, uh, you know, I called the lumberyard, she called me back. And then uh, she said, told me that she would have to speak to somebody in regards to restocking fee. And then I received a call back from her that, that night, Saturday night. And she says, I'm not, you know, I don't think I should pay a restocking fee because it doesn't say it on your contract. I says, I ordered all the materials. Well, she also told you that she had called around. Yeah, she, she, uh, I think she mentioned she was going to speak to her ex-husband. No, uh, but that she had called report. around to other lumber yards and, then, and they didn't and have restocking. And then Sunday morning, I received the text that she called lumber yards and was told that there's no such thing as a restocking fee. Okay, that's just not true, but okay. All right, and, and that... Uh, whoever I might be using to buy the material is is taking me, and that she didn't want to be taken. Okay. And what I want to know, what lumberyard is open between 7 o'clock on a Saturday night and 9 o'clock Sunday morning? None that I've there ever seen. There aren't any. Okay. And then there was subsequent text after that, which I submitted the copies of. Uh, you know, basically, you know, not wanting to pay the restocking fee. And then on Monday, when I did contact the lumberyard, I texted her back, 
And I gave her the phone number for the lumber yard. I gave her this, uh, the general manager's name, extension number, and I said, please call them. To so you can see that I'm being charged the that. Fee. I called the lumber yard at the end of the day on Monday. All right. She never called. She never called them. Never called to confirm that. And then? And then I, then I, then the text, then I had sent her the text in regards to uh, the restocking fee, the amount, uh, my labor into the job that I wanted to meet with her, like you just stated, that I would refund the balance of the deposit less those amounts, and it w when I could meet with her at her home. And then basically, I would have to look into this further bef before I would accept your offer. She says, okay, Phil, since your contract did not state any conditions, I want aware of it, so we will let my attorney and consumer affairs get in touch with you. Exactly. I'm trying to resolve this matter amicably, but for such unfairness on your part, we are forced to deal this way. And then you respond, at this point, that's probably best. And then she responds, this bastard replied, at this point, I think it's best. Was this a group text or something and you didn't realize? <laughs> Did you know he got that text? You were sending that to somebody else, but it ended up going to him? I guess so. So does he get to keep the deposit? Unless it says that it's a refundable deposit. It's, it doesn't say that. Then he gets to keep it, of course. Because? Because she didn't follow the contract. What do you think? I think it depends on the timing. I think that if- hey, she to... signed the contract and then she found out she couldn't get financing. Hey, I, I mean, I think if he had to forego other projects, then, then yeah, he should get to keep the deposit. She was entitled to the profits from the project going inside the courtroom. I, I didn't mean to go to him. I know, I know. I it's very like, frustrating. You gotta be point. careful of these days, you I know? Hear you. Believe me, I've done worse. So, <laughs> Ms. Bonetta, I am so sorry that you did not consult that attorney you said you'd consult. Did you ever consult an attorney? Yes, I did. And you have an attorney who told you that when you sign a contract, you can just get out of it and not to worry. You wanna know? What did your attorney tell you? I spoke to him an about it. attorney or a law student? No, 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 no. He's my attorney. Okay. And I told him the problem. I yeah, told did you him tell him happened. accurately that you had signed the contract 10 days Yes, I, I told him. And did you tell him how much money the guy had spent already? And, the guy, and your attorney told Honestly, him you need a new you attorney. Wanna... That's what you need, okay? Because the law is that if you breach a contract, his measure of damages is his lost profits on the case. He is out. 5,000. So he has your check for 3520 already, correct? Yes. And you now, by virtue of having started this litigation, not only have you lost the 3520, but you also have to pay him another 1480. Because when you breach, the consequences are for you, not for that side. $1,480 verdict for the defendant. Well, the plaintiff's out here after hearing that ruling that you sued him and you wound up hearing him win his countersuit, and what's your reaction? I don't think it was fair for, for many ways because I didn't know that I um, needed X amount of time to cancel, so. Yeah, but should you have taken his offer of, uh, you know, it would have been $700 or something and you would have been all done? You know, I, um, if, in the future, I want people to know not to sign something they don't thoroughly read, and that's why oh, that's I can't. that's a good idea, yeah. And that's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, good, head right, head right down this way. Head Thank with you. Officer McIntosh. Okay, so what, what's your feeling here, so? Uh, you made out pretty well. It's, it's unfortunate what, what transpired, uh, but the whole thing is I, I did everything right. You know, I've, I've been in business for over 20 years. This is the first time I've ever had a complaint or a cancellation or anything, and Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel... What about a, all those other guys that you know, I, had to cancel work, too, as a said, result? A, a lot of people lost money for that. A lot of people stayed home, and it's, it's tough enough to get by nowadays. You think you she know? understands it yet? I guess she's going to need to now. All right, Harvey. Here's the thing. You could actually, theoretically, if you breach a contract, you could end up paying more than the actual value of the contract. The person who is the victim gets all of the damages resulting from your breach.